two strikes, you're out. Based on Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 through 13, let's go. When hardships come, the people forget that it was their fear that kept them from taking the good land God had promised them. Again and again, they complain. No water. Now what do I do? The spring is dry. How can I cook or walk? I'll have our tribal leaders take this up with Moses. Well, Moses, where are we going to get water? Did you lead us out here to die of thirst? I mean, I know I asked you that the other day, but I'm asking you again because I'm thirsty. (laughs) We've had enough. Let's go back to Egypt. (laughs) Who's with me this time? At least there we had food and we had water. We had grapes. We had wine. Okay. I'm just asking for water. I don't even need wine. I'm just asking for water. You want water? I'll give you water. In a fit of anger, Moses strikes a nearby rock with his staff twice. Water pours out. But God is not happy. How can Moses teach the people to obey if he doesn't obey himself? Because of his bad example, God tells Moses that he will not enter the promised land. (gasps) Uh, um, Are you in trouble with God? Because... Bye! (sighs) That's messed up. The bronze snake, based on Numbers chapter 20, verse 22, through chapter 21, verse 22. The Israelites travel on. When they come to Mount Or, God tells Moses that Aaron will soon die, and he should take Aaron and his son Eliezer to the mountaintop. Eliezer, take your father's robe. You will take his place as high priest of all Israel. Yes. Aaron dies on Mount Or. And the Israelites mourn for 30 days. Then they move on. A cloud leads them by day and a pillar of fire leads them by night. But the people soon forget, as always, God's care. And again, they complain. (laughs) There's not enough water. I'm always thirsty. I'm I'm swallowing my spit to stay alive right now. I'm so tired. Hasn't God always given us water when we needed it? Did you forget? I mean, it was two days ago. I mean, 30 days ago. So what? And you said God will give us freedom. Do you call this freedom? Wandering around this wilderness? This is freedom to you, Moses? Like wild animals. This is freedom. For real? Yeah, this don't make no sense. Suddenly... As punishment for their grumbling, the camp comes alive with poisonous snakes. Help! I've been bitten! I've been bitten! Do we got a lawyer? Moses, call on the Lord! Help me! Or I'll die! Ah! Oh, Chase! Oh, the snakes! We getting plagued like the Egyptians. The Egyptians. Doesn't God love us? Moses. Okay, okay, we sin. We sin against God and against you. Please, please forgive us and take away these snakes. Oh, please. Take them away. I will ask God to help you. Moses prays and God tells him to make a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Listen to me, everyone, who has been bitten by the snakes. God said that if you look at this bronze snake, you will be well again. Wow, God is so gracious. He is so gracious, okay. Oh, man. They got bit, but they didn't die. How gracious. I'm well. God has healed me. Yeah. Everyone who looks up at the snake is healed. Oh, God, please. Oh, yes. Jesus, forgive me. I was wrong. Yes. 
Moses and his people continue their journey. This time, no one complains or questions Moses' right to lead. When they reach the border of the Amorites, Moses summons two messengers. Go, speak to King Sion. Ask him if we may pass through his land in peace. The Wonderful Win Against Og. Based on Numbers chapter 21, verses 21 through 35. At King Sion's palace. O king, our leader, Moses asked if we may pass through your country. We will not drink from your wells or... No! Get out and stay out, all of you! I don't know you. Get on. Get out my face. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that went terrible. What'd you say? <clears throat> Nothing, king. Why should he be so angry? I don't know, but I'm scared. What are we going to do now? I wasn't expecting that. Meantime, in King Sion's palace, attack the Israelites right away. We'll catch them off guard and destroy them. Right away, sir. In the Israelite camp, Moses and Joshua listened to the reports of the messengers. They might just try to attack us. Let's get ready in case they come. What up? At daybreak, King Sion strikes. He is surprised by a strong counterattack from the Israelites. Get him! The Amorites are defeated in a swift battle. Take that! This one's for the snake, and this one's for God. Then Joshua goes on to take the enemy's capital city of Heshbron. The Israelite soldiers are eager to push on after this victory. But Joshua goes to Moses for advice. Shall we move north into Bashan? It's a powerful country, and their King Og is a giant. Send out some scouts to explore the land first. Then we'll decide, says Moses. Joshua's scouts are discovered, and a messenger hurries to tell King Og of Bashan. Oh, King, I saw some strange men spying out our land. They must be the Israelites. They just conquered the Amorites. But we'll teach them a lesson. Boldly, the giant King Og of Bashan sets out to teach the Israelites a lesson in warfare, but instead, Joshua and his men teach Og about defeat. The Israelites are now camped just across the river from the land God had promised them. A Stubborn Mule and His Donkey, based on Numbers chapters 22 through 24. But little does Israel know that other countries are watching their victories and scheming against them. King Balak sees the defeat of Sihon and Og and knows he is next. In fear, he sends for a powerful sorcerer named Balaam. If you can put a curse on the Israelites, King Balak will greatly reward you. Balaam sets out on his fateful donkey to meet with King Balak. But God sends an angel to stop him. Balaam doesn't notice anything, but when Balaam's donkey sees the fearsome angel, she scampers into the field to avoid his fiery sword. Stupid beast! Then the angel of the Lord moves ahead to a narrow path between two stone walls. The donkey presses close against one of the walls to dodge the angel's sword. But Balaam's foot is smashed against the wall and he beats her again. Ow! Ah! Oh! Curse you! You dirty donkey! Finally, the angel stands in a narrow place where the donkey has no place to turn. With no other option, she lies down right in the middle of the road. That's the last straw. I'm going to pummel you within an inch of your life. But even as Balaam is yelling, the Lord opens the donkey's mouth. Why, if I had a sword right now, I'll slice you up and feed you to the dogs. Master, haven't I always been your faithful donkey? Have I ever served you poorly? Ah, ah, boo, ah. What sound does donkeys make? Yes, but now you are making a fool of me. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes to see the angel. You should be ashamed for beating your donkey. Had it not been for her, I would have killed you three times by now. Oh, oh, oh my, oh, move donkey. I have sinned. 
I am so sorry. Tell me what you want me to do and I promise I'll do it. Go, prophesy for Balak. But I warn you that you must only speak what the Lord tells you. No curses can fall on Israel this day. Balaam goes and tells Balak what the Lord says. Those who bless Israel will be blessed and those who curse Israel will be cursed. Balak is understandably upset at these words, but he cannot stand in the way of Israel. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> ah, donkey's talking! All right, y'all. Let's see who's going to come up against Israel next. Until next time.